Ladies and gentlemen, artists, colleagues, and friends, welcome to the Symposium Global Art, which is a collaboration between the International Art Critics Association, ICA, Austria, and Switzerland, and the Salzburg International Summer Academy of Fine Arts. One year ago, when Sabine Bifugel uh, told me about her idea of a global art symposium, I immediately thought this would be a very good idea for a collaboration with the Summer Academy. When Oskar Kokoschka founded the Salzburg International Summer Academy of Fine Arts in 1953, as a school of seeing, as he called it, it was meant to be an international institution with, which was extremely exceptional at that time. The program leaflets were produced in four languages and also the teachers came from all over Western Europe and Northern America, what was the uh, Western world at that time, and um, also uh, former immigrants from the Nazi time, like Konrad Wachsmann, uh, taught at the Summer Academy already in 1956. And it was a time where the state academies in Vienna were extremely provincial and only focused in Austria and perhaps also in Germany. Also the students came from the beginning from all over the world. And what was also a principle from, from the beginning and what is still specific about the Summer Academy is that uh, not only art students and artists are participants, but also amateurs. My predecessor, Barbara Valli, started in the 1990s with the idea of a global academy. She, estab she established good relations to China, so for example in 2005, uh, Ai Weiwei was teaching at the Summer Academy. Uh, there were many important uh, Japanese architects as teachers at the Summer Academy, and uh, Wiley also established partnerships with institutions in the Middle East and Northern Africa. The symposium today and tomorrow is based on the idea of a global shift in contemporary art, curating and art history during the last 20 years at least. This symposium wants to clarify what this means exactly. What is global art? What is global curating? What is global art history? My hope and desire is that this symposium will not only be inspiring for all of us, but also have an impact on our institution, the Summer Academy, uh, within the next years. The the symposium is divided in three sections. And the lectures will all be approximately 50 minutes, followed by immediate uh, discussion of immediate questions. And then in the end of every section, there is a panel discussion as well, where the audience can participate. The first one, the first section today, is titled, What is Global Art History? Hans Belting and Monika Juneja will give the papers and Peter Friedl will join us at the panel discussion. The second section tomorrow morning is What is Global Art with Nancy Atajania and Gerardo Mosquera moderated by Sabine Bifugel. Maria Lind will join for the discussion. And the third section tomorrow afternoon is called What is the Relation of Global Art and Regional Developments? With Chitish Kalat, Bassam El Baroni, and Senam Okuzeto, moderated by Simone Wille. Chitish Kalat and Senam Okuzeto, as well as Peter Friedel and Maria Lind, are giving classes at the Summer Academy and connect the symposium directly with our course, course program. I'd like to thank first and foremost Sabine Bifugel, uh, the president of the ICA Austria, uh, whose idea it was, as I already said, uh, and also for the good collaboration so far. Uh, and also Samuel Herzog from the ICA Switzerland, and both of the ICAs also uh, gave money into the symposium. Um, this also did the Ministry for Arts and Culture in Vienna with a special fund. I want to thank uh, all the people who helped us uh, organize this symposium. Uh, um, 
Bärbel Hartemer, Assistant Susanne Tiefenbacher, and uh, you see already there are two translators um, uh, translating for the German titles. Uh, today it's Claudia Raschan and Maria Niefel, and tomorrow it's also Robert Gieshammer. Thank you for this very important and very difficult work you do. And I have to thank the University of Salzburg for making it possible that we can do the symposium here. And as well, the city and the region of Salzburg who fund the Summer Academy. I also want to mention uh, the table uh, with the books where you can buy books of, I think, all of the lecturers, which is outside by the Robertus Buchhandlung. Last and not least, I want to thank all the lecturers and all the participants in the uh, panels for being here and for joining us, and also you, the audience. Thank you. Now, Sabine Bifogel will talk about the concept of the symposium. Thank you, Ludwig Sanzler, for the great cooperation and that it's possible to do this symposium here in Salzburg, which I think is a great opportunity. And thanks to all joining us here. Also in the name of ICA, of the International Art Critic Association, from Austria and Switzerland. My interest in the subject of global art started a couple of years ago on a kind of a very personal level. Since several years, I'm traveling to biennials. Let's wait a second. Hurry, hurry. Since several years, I'm traveling to biennials all over the globe. Some years ago, I perceived a very big change. These large-scale exhibitions are less and less dominated by Western artists. Whether in Sharjah or Singapore, Istanbul or Liverpool, more and more artists are coming from all over the world. And they are, they are being introduced to con a considerably increasing local and global audience. Reviewing these biennials for magazines, I got into a dilemma. How to name this new situation? Do these inter ex exhibitions become more international? In the time of modernity, the term international only included the artists from USA, West Europe, and some alien countries like Japan. All the rest of the world was, on several reasons, excluded. So quite so the opposite of what I perceived. But how to label this new worldwide global increasing art world? This new development started with the beginning of globalization in the 1990s. So why not call it global art? There are advantages, but also a lot of disadvantages. So researching this term, I stepped into several buts. As far as I can see, global was first used at the end of the 19th century, used for cosmopolitan tourists, which were at that time, again, mainly Western tourists, uh, Western people. So again, an exclusion. The so nowadays presentation of global art follows the main parameters of modern, means Western art, like white cube, museum professional presentation and things like this. Does global just mean another way of the same old Westernization? <laughs> Is global then just another garment for a homogenization process within the arts? Or, last but not least, too loud? No, it's just to be strong, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and last but not least, global is closely connected to globalization, including the ide ideology of neoliberalism, the domination of economy, and the global market ca capitalism. The term global art contains all this. And still, can't we adapt this term for the new open-minded, even bridge-building development which you can follow on every upcoming biennial, a bridge between traditions and times, between different cultures and histories, a bridge between equal territories? Or is this too naive? Do we maybe just watch a geographical shift within the art market with no further means for the concepts of art? Well, I decided to use this term, but with open questions in my mind. How do you define the new qualities of global art and where are the differences to earlier forms of intercultural exchanges? These are the starting points for my interest into this subject, and I very much hope that we will discuss this in the following symposium. Thanks a lot. Yeah.
Yes, we are starting now with the first section called Global Art History. When I studied uh, history of art in the 1970s, there was an examination which I fear is still existing, uh, where one had to know the entire art history, which was, of course, Western art history. Since then, a lot has changed. We talk about rewriting art history. We talk about the end of the master narrative and, of course, the encyclopedic knowledge, which this examination was about, um, it does not anymore exist. Hans Belting even spoke about the end of art history, which is the title of one of his influential books. For me, there were two major experiences which shifted my own view on art history and curating. These were, on the one hand, uh, Jean Hubert Martin's exhibition Magicien de la Terre in the Centre Pompidou, 1989, and on the other hand, it was Edward Said's book on, called Orientalism. The question we want to pose now to our speakers this afternoon, Hans Belting and Monica Geneja, to outstanding and pioneering scientists and teachers in the field is what is global art history? I want to, I'm very uh, happy that Hans Belting is here and giving this lecture, um, and I introduce him to you very briefly. Uh, he's art historian, Professor Emeritus at the State University of Arts and Design in Karlsruhe, published many, many books, as you might know. Uh, one of these is Florenz und Bagdad, Eine Westöstliche Geschichte des Blicks, which was published in 2008, and which was for me a very, very important book, which really opened up new horizons in terms of art history and this international connections between scientists and artists uh, already at the time, uh, 15th and 16th century. He also is co-editor together with Andrea Budensieg of the Global Art World, Audiences, Markets and Museums, which was published in 2009. And he initiated together with Peter Weibel the GAM, Global Art and the Museum at the ZKM Center for Arts and Media Karlsruhe in 2006. Uh, Hans Belting is now uh, going to talk about world art and global art, a new challenge to art history.